Hi everyone and welcome into Fair Game. I'm Ariel Orsudo. Fair Game was built out of a promise to deliver stories that were untold in the sports community and be a voice for the voiceless. It was my passion to elevate women in the sports community, the LGBT plus community, people of color, people with disabilities, and any other marginalized communities that are ignored all too often in sports coverage. So without further ado, let's get right into the stories for the day. Becky Hammond is the best example of what we do here at Fair Game. She's the definition of a trailblazer as the first woman to be a coach in the NBA. I had the privilege to sit down with her this past year before her Hall of Fame induction. The significance of Women's History Month settled in on Becky Hammond as she took the stage of a series called Bold Women Change History. Very stubborn. Hammond isn't changing history, she said, without history first allowing her and other female athletes to do so. I mean, obviously without Title IX, neither of us are sitting here. I'm definitely not sitting here. <laughs> um, my whole uh, career, my whole life has been dedicated based on these opportunities that Title IX provides. And so for me, um, it's a little bit of a snowball effect in the sense of like, without Title IX, I never get the opportunity to play in college probably. Um, professionally, I never get that. And then, you know, if I don't play professional ball, maybe the NBA and, and Greg Popovich never have an opportunity to kind of see me as a professional athlete. Talking about opportunities and equality just at your professional, I mean, you were a trailblazer in the NBA, becoming the first female coach in the NBA. Honestly, do you get sick of being called a trailblazer? <laughs> no, I don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's a mantle that uh, I have a lot of respect for. Um, I handle, I think, with appropriate caution and care. Um, because I know the weight of it and how many people came before me in order for us to even be having this conversation. Hammond had natural coaching chops that he and everybody saw over the last year. You know, we, we were just trying to figure it out a lot of times. You know, there were some things that was came up I didn't even see coming up, and there were some things where it was like, no, this is wrong, we need to fix this. Her next opportunity to make history came knocking. She turned down the NBA and turned to the W, becoming the first rookie coach to win a WNBA title this past summer with the Las Vegas Aces. <laughs> Yeah. WNBA is, is never a step back for me. It's a step forward. It's a different direction. It's never a step back. And I never looked at it like that. This was a opportunity that I felt, A, I was ready for. Um, quite frankly, I don't need validation from any NBA executive to say I'm a good coach. I really don't, I'm over it. Yeah. Instead, she's becoming the hero she rarely had as a kid. Growing up, Hammond had posters of Michael Jordan on her walls, only eventually discovering Cheryl Swoops and Lisa Leslie. I think that, again, is why it's so powerful to have women athletes, because this is somebody that looks like you, has um, the same height as you, the same, you know, um, to see somebody else do it, I think is so powerful and impactful for the next generation. And as Hammond says, the next generation just keeps getting bigger, faster, and stronger. And while she can't wait to see who she'll be rooting for in the future, she's continuously celebrating the past. There's so many different things and factors that could go into greatness. And I feel like, why can't they all just be great? Like, cause they are. Just let great be great. Just let great be great. Becky was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame this past August and then won her second consecutive WNBA championship with the Las Vegas Aces. Not every story about a Hall of Fame pro athlete, in fact, some people of our local community, have a unique and powerful story to tell. There's a stigma that follows athletes of the LGBTQ community that they can't be competitive athletes, but these football and hockey players are here to set that story straight. We got, we got one more half. We can do this. This is our game. We start tough. I want rough on three. One, two, three. Rough! Let's go! Let's go! It's playoff time for the Denver Gay Lesbian Flag Football League, one of the largest 7v7 leagues in the entire country for the LGBTQ community and its straight allies. It was like, no way. This is way too good to be true. Competitive flag football, uh, LGBTQ plus community. Tim! The emphasis is on competitive. While it's a recreation league at its core, the DGL FFL boasts a handful of former collegiate athletes. Hannah Marsh was a three-sport athlete who played volleyball at UNC Wilmington. It is very competitive. Uh, oftentimes I like to call myself a competitive um, where I just can't let that athlete in me go. And honestly, it, this is the best thing for me because it's family, but also competitive athletic sportsmanship. Yeah! 
Kyle Gibson started at catcher for the University of Louisville, even making two appearances in the College Baseball World Series. He said the DGL FFL scratches that competitive itch. Coming from a collegiate background, you get that from this league because everybody's wanting to come out here and compete, be athletic, win a championship. So they're not just coming out. It's not, it's not a beer league softball. Um, it's, it's you're coming out here to play a sport and people are competitive. So you know what you're getting and that makes it fun. In the end of it, I mean, you've got a family and that's, you've got some people that you're close to. You're out here competing and those are like the kind of memories that you want to make with friends. Um, where you have good times and bad times. So I think that's what this league gives you. Big game pups, make you rest. Go Miners! Family is the theme over at the Denver Women's Hockey League, where wives Jane and Amy Perulis are a pair of former Division I athletes pursuing competitive play. Listen, she went to UNC, so, you know, she was a, a track and field player. Uh, athlete, player. athlete. athlete. Uh, Jane played on the inaugural women's hockey team at Quinnipiac, so hockey is in her blood. But the former track and field Tar Heel is leaning on her athleticism to try something new. So I've uh, been competitive all of my life, so it wasn't really hard for me to hop right into a competitive team sport. One, two, three, Alabama! So we came out here and heard about the Denver Women's Hockey League, and at first I did not take advantage of it. I kind of sat and I watched and I kind of got to the point where I was like, I'm done watching. I'm ready to do this. i decent enough on skates. I, you know, I feel like I have some stick handling skills. I'm an athlete, like I want to do this. I'm going to do this. Determination, perseverance, and competition are not associated with sexual orientation or gender identity. Yet a stigma has been cast over the LGBTQ community that they're somehow unable to properly contribute to elite sports. Just ask these athletes if they subscribe to that stereotype. Early whistle rap, early whistle. You just prove to them, hey, yeah, I can play. You have talent, you have talent. Just go out and show them. I think we just need to get rid of that stigma. We can be athletes. We can do anything we want to and want to accomplish. And there shouldn't be a stigma towards anybody because if anybody wants to be athletic and enjoy themselves, they should have that right. No, that was good deed. Coming up, you heard from local queer athletes, but what happens when someone comes out in high level division one football? Meet Kennedy McDowell with the Colorado State Rams. Plus, she's the most positive coach you'll ever meet, but there's a serious reason behind her positivity. That's next. Welcome back to Fair Game. Kennedy McDowell has faced some challenges in his first year with the Colorado State Rams, but living authentically is not one of those. I am openly gay. I've been openly gay since I would say about seventh, eighth grade. Kennedy McDowell is a freshman defensive lineman who is flying a bit under the radar, but his impact has the capacity to move mountains. It's not the first time that somebody has told me like, you know, I, don't, I didn't know about gay people before you, but now, like, you, you changed my mind. I can be gay and be a football player, but I can still be your friend. The Rams welcomed him with open arms. They were like, we, we play football, dude. Like, Coach Norvell felt like a father when I got here. Like, he felt like my dad. But about halfway through the season, Kennedy McDowell, the football player, had to take a step back. During the second half kickoff of the Boise State game, McDowell suffered a head injury. I didn't know what year it was. I didn't know the month. I um, I just woke up in the hospital, and, and that was that was it. It was that unfortunate event that led him to truly understand how much his team loved him and cared about him like family. So proud of you, our team, and our leadership, the way they rallied around Kenny. It warmed my heart. It really did. The way that they were worried about me when I came back and. I felt comfortable, like comfort, just straight comfort. I, I felt like everybody was there for me. Comfort is key. Kennedy is comfortable in the man that he's become and loves living his truth. He hopes that he can be an inspiration for others walking a similar path. I want to inspire people and there's a lot of queer athletes out there and some of them are in the closet and that's 
totally okay. I just wanna say love, love everyone, and make sure that you love yourself more than anything, because if you can't love yourself, then how are you gonna love someone else? Wise words. Kennedy is now healthy after his head injury in October, but did not return to action for the Rams this season. He instead looks forward to next year. Dosha Woods is positively grateful for her life as a head coach of the DU women's basketball team, but it's her early struggles that gave her that perspective. Good bird, good bird. Making progress toward an authentic life starts with opening up some old wounds. After years of bottling up her traumatic past, Denver head coach Dosha Woods is no longer swallowing the whistle. Well, after years of therapy, because honestly, I, I think now I'm being a full-blown adult in my 40s, been able to look back and not realizing how hard something is because you're just trying to get through it. Hard is a way to describe sprints after a bad practice. What Dosha experienced in her youth was life-altering, and she recalls the exact moment it changed forever. I was excited because I just made varsity as a freshman. And I remember coming home and there's yellow tape all around and um, they said, hey, you gotta get to the hospital, it's gonna drive by. At this time in our life, our house had become the drug house. And I remember seeing her laying there, being excited on one hand because I couldn't wait to share this news. But then on the other hand, seeing her laying there, I think she was in the hospital for about three or four days. And I remember I said, you know, when you get home, I'm not gonna be here. And I, I love, my, my mom passed in 2013, but one thing that I, I appreciate more so now is the courage that she had to just let me leave at 14. It wasn't even a conversation, she just said okay. And was around when she needed me, was around, I would see her when I can, but it was just like a okay. So the courage that she showed as a mom to just say, I know I can't do it, but if you find something better, I trust you. And she trusted me or I wouldn't be sitting here. Dosha trusted the coaches around her to provide a temporary home and to keep her involved with sports. Patience guards, patience. Being active in any sports and your coach gives you a chance to at least for those two to three hours, you don't have to think about anything. You know, for me and my situation, I didn't have to think about if there was gonna be another drive by, I didn't have to think about if we we're gonna have food that night or what type of abuse was gonna happen. I could focus on the court. And so coaches become a big role in that of just helping you have that outlet. It's all about perspective. Now as a head coach of a D1 basketball team, Dosha posts the word grateful each morning as a reminder of how far she's come. Really a message to my younger self to um, what, what she endured and what, what I get to live now. Um, it is, it's hard to catch me having a bad day. I had enough of them. We hadn't run that much, barely been full court. Go ahead, Dusk. If I catch myself having a moment, um, I don't have my phone, but I keep a picture of my phone. It's me with the basketball. I think I'm like 10 years old. And I have to stay positive because I know how hard it was for her. And the hard things that she went through, um, basketball could never be that hard. Life could never be that hard now because I'm in control. I wasn't in control than I am now. Coming up, this senior softball team is bringing the fire. Plus, a climbing gym in an underserved neighborhood is breaking down barriers. That's next. Welcome back to Fair Game. There's no age limit to talent, and that's what the Colorado Wildfire is proving by swinging bats and taking names. Go, go, go! There's a softball team in town that's catching fire. Right through, right through, that's three. Colorado Wildfire is a group of women ages 50 to 80 plus who play softball and we practice and we play in tournaments. You heard right, 50 to 80 plus years old and the players of the Colorado Wildfire appear to have hit a line drive straight into the fountain of youth. People are they're like aging backwards. I see some of my teammates who are getting better and better and running faster and faster and making plays and hitting the ball harder and farther. Uh, you know, age, age is just a number. 81-year-old Laura Sawyer is the oldest member of the Wildfire, but she's more of a spitfire if you ask her teammates. Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go. If you don't play with somebody younger and better, you know, then you're not going to get any better. Betsy Anderson is the manager of the 70s team, but only recently aged into her role. When I was invited by a friend, an older team had to have people to practice from. My friend said, but we can't play on the team because we're too young. Since I had just retired from a long teaching career, I said, what do you mean I'm not old enough for something? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But for Anderson and many wildfire players her age, playing an organized sport is personal. There were few opportunities for girls prior to the passing of Title IX 50 years ago. I don't like to be put in a box, so don't tell me I can't do something 
or I will fight my way out. And I find that the, uh, the women that are brave enough to come try something new, as a softball is to many of them, uh, are brave enough in other aspects of their life. So they're people I respect and like to be around. Bravery and benevolence. We joke around, we have a good time. We support each other in hard times, which we all have, that's part of life. And uh, we encourage us to try anything and everything new. The wildfires medaled at the Huntsman World Senior Games in three age groups, including a gold medal for the 55s. A climbing gym in Globeville is removing financial barriers to change the way you think about the sport by diversifying it with the best possible athletes. Just sit up, really push, drive that foot in. In the sport of climbing, finding a secure path is the first step. Good, switch. Pop that foot up. And the mission has always been to provide access to climbing in places where climbing is not, doesn't have much exposure. Amon Anderson is providing that access. His climbing gym, Beast Fingers, is in the heart of Globeville, which he says is underserved in the climbing community. But it's only a microcosm of a larger systemic problem in the sport. How do you tap into a whole different market of, 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 um, of athleticism? You know, with the basketball courts, you can put a basketball court in any hood in America, just lay some concrete, throw some, some steel posts, and we good. The climbing gym, it ain't that simple. So it's like, if you want a diverse Team USA, it's gonna take some risk. You just gotta really crank that left arm. Just, ah. It was yeah. worth the risk to be a safe haven for his community. Not only is Anderson trying to train the next generation of Olympians, but he's also providing aftercare and peace of mind for local children. There could be chaos going on in their home environment, but yet when they come here, they begin to learn the purity and how to climb them. While recent financial stress threatened the closure of his gym, Anderson is fighting to remain a beacon for those needing to grasp on to some stability. Come on, Amaya. Good. Switch feet. Now pop. Good. I wanted to continue to be a light, you know, a lighthouse for people here. Uh, I wanted to continue being a, a place where I either make Team USA or get off the street on, and make something of their lives. Yeah! Coming up, she's a world champion in a sport you may not have heard of. We take a walk on the links with long drive master Monica Living. next. Welcome back to Fair Game. A full round of 18 holes isn't for everyone. That's where lo World Long Drive kicks in. A thrilling sport of the longest, fastest drives. And a Colorado resident scorched the top of the women's division, despite a few personal hurdles. Not everyone takes the path most traveled. Monica Living left most of her golf clubs in her bag when she graduated college and found a new sport that suited her spirit a bit better in World Long Drive. I can't replicate the feeling that I get when I'm, you know, standing up there and competing and when you hit a good shot when you need it. I mean, I've never felt anything like it. Best one yet. A feeling she needed to soak in. Living is living proof of perseverance. After suffering from migraines, a stroke, a herniated disc, and a cancer scare early in her career, she battled back to win two events, catapulting to the top of the rankings, taking back control of her own life. I kind of felt like I was the main character of my story, right? I'm like, okay, you know, I have all these things, you know, that could be pushing me down, just like I had all of these things during college, during, you know, even before then, that, you know, people, situations, things that made me feel like they were getting in my way and stopping me from my potential. And long drive for me has been like, you know, I get to take that story back. The confidence that it gave me that I could still go out and win under those circumstances has changed my life. And, you know, there's still a lot of a lot of things that will happen in life. But, you know, in that situation, I just felt, you know, on top of the world that I could overcome that. My current PR for Long Drive happened here in Colorado a couple weeks ago, and that is 375 yards. And now she's the number two ranked woman in World Long Drive. In what she describes as a male-dominated sport, Living says she loves leading a pack of strong women 
at the tea box. I think that the fun part about it is it's kind of that, you know, feeling and storyline of like, not necessarily like proving people wrong, but like proving myself right. Like, yes, I'm capable of doing this. Yes, this is what I do and I'm good at it. It's really empowering and I'm really passionate about showing like, hey, women can do this too. And there's a lot of, you know, amazing women who do compete in the sport and they're incredible. And we put on a show, you know, and we're really fun to watch and people love watching it. Last ball, best ball. Monica won her first ever long drive world championship this past October after cruising as the number two overall woman throughout the season. A huge first year for her as she starts her professional golf career. That's gonna do it for us here at Fair Game for 2023, but that's not even close to all the stories we told this year. So you can visit our website at 9news.com slash fair game to see all the stories in one place. Make sure to follow me on social media at Ariel Orsudo to share your stories. Have a great holiday season and be kind to each other.